Hi, boys and girls. We got another great book today. A uh, fa uh, fan favorite is the Bernstein Bears. And this one's called The Bernstein Bears and Too Much Vacation. Have you ever gone on vacation and it ended up being a really long vacation and you're ready to go back home? I think that's what's going to happen with the Bernstein Bears. So let's turn this a little bit so you can uh, I'll get a little bit of cord there. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Anyway, here we go. Written by Stan and Jan Bernstein. Well, that's everything, said Mother Mama Bear, as she and sister and brother Bear held the car trunk lid so that Papa Bear could tie it down. Not quite, said Papa, running back into the treehouse. We almost forgot the camera, he said. When he reappeared, what what good is a wonderful vacation without photographs to remember it by? Good thinking, Papa, said Brother. May I take some pictures when we get there? And how about me, Sister wanted to know. Of course you may, said Papa, as they bundled into the car. We're all going to take pictures of the most wonderful vacation the Bear family has ever had. All right, now, everybody buckle up and we'll be on our way. Four safety belts clicked into place and they left their safe, comfortable treehouse and headed for the excitement and adventure of a vacation high up in the wilds of the Great Grizzly Mountains. Ooh, sounds fun. It had been Papa's idea to take their vacation in the Great Grizzlies. It'll be real wilderness experience. We'll <clears throat> live off the land. We're getting too, too soft here in the valley with all our supermarkets and other conveniences. When he saw the ad in the newspaper, there was no holding him. It said, try a wilderness vacation a lovely mountain cabin complete with a rowboat by beautiful, a beautiful crystal lake. Ah, said Papa's painting picture, word, <laughs> painting beautiful word pictures to wake up with the rising sun and catch our breakfast from a clear mountain lake to bathe in its sparkling water, to snack on delicious wild berries as we tramp the mountain trails, <laughs> to gaze at the beauty of the mountain sunset, then to sleep through the peace and quiet of the mountain night, far from the noise of traffic and neighbors barking dogs. It all sounded great to the cubs. What kind of fish? Will we catch Papa? asked Brother. Trout, no doubt, he answered with supreme confidence. But Mama wasn't so sure he would catch anything. So when she packed, she took along some canned goods in case the trout weren't biting, and some books and games in case of rainy days. I can almost taste that fresh caught trout, said Brother, as the road led ever higher into the mountain forest. And I can almost taste those yummy wild berries, said sister. And don't forget my terrific wilderness stew, said Papa, as he turned onto the even steeper road. We, But we didn't bring things for stew, objected Mama. All we brought are some canned goods. Of course we didn't, laughed Papa. I'm talking about my special live-off-the-land survival stew. It's my secret recipe. I make it from bark, leaves, and roots that I can find in the woods. When will we get there, asked the cubs. Very soon, I can tell by the smell of the mountain air, said Papa, taking a deep breath. That's not mountain air, complained brother. Making a face, that skunk. Hmm, said Papa, wrinkling his nose. A good time to start taking those pictures, thought Mama. P 
you, said Papa. Click, said the camera. <laughs> There's the cabin, shouted Sister as they rounded a bend. And there it was indeed, a mountain cabin beside a lake, complete with rowboat, of course. It wasn't quite as they had pictured it from the ad. Crystal Lake looked more like a mud <laughs> soup. The lovely mountain cabin looked more like a tumble-down shack. There was a rowboat, all right, but it was half sunk in the lake. <laughs> But Papa wasn't the least bit discouraged. He was more excited than ever. It's perfect, he shouted. The most perfect live off the land vacation spot I've ever seen. Mama wasn't so sure. She noticed that there were no wires leading into the cabin, which meant there was no electricity. That's the last thing we need, scoffed Papa. What you need on a live off the land vacation is plenty of can-do spirit and lots of forest smarts and i've got enough of those for all of us he took a cooking pot and a folding chair from the car trunk here he said making a seat for mama this is a vacation you relax while i gather the fixings for my fabulous wilderness stew and you two tidy up the cabin he called to the cubs as he headed into the forest with the cooking pot but Mama didn't expect to do much, relaxing on this vacation, and she was surprised to find that the cabin wasn't even worse, was even in a worse mess inside than it was outside. There was an ankle deep carpet of twigs, branches, and dead leaves on the floor, and it was practically a museum of spider webs, cocoons, and mouse nests. Time for another picture, thought Mama. Scurry, scurry, went the mice. Click, went the camera. <laughs> What's this, asked Sister, as she cleaned the leaves out of the sink. That's a hand pump for water, answered Mama. Just what I need. It was Papa back with his cooking pot, full of strange-looking bark, leaves, and roots. A little water for my stew. He worked the handle, the pump gurgled <laughs> and squeaked, and after a while began to squirt water, rusty brown water, but wasn't, but he wasn't discouraged. Just what I need for my stew, he said, cheerfully ready, made gravy. <laughs> he carried the pot outside where he had prepared a cooking fire. It was very exciting for the cubs. But Mama wasn't so sure, so she made a fire in the fireplace and warmed up a supper of canned beans and dried honeycomb. That sounds good, huh? When Papa cried, stew time, the cubs ran out for the first taste. Mama followed with the camera. <laughs> Here's to living off the land, said Papa, holding strange-looking stuff. A, oh, a big spoon of strange looking stuff. Then he, brother and sister, each took a taste. Yug, said sister. Blech, said brother. Petui, said papa. Click, said the camera. <laughs> Mama Bear's supper was of beans and honeycomb proved very tasty. Papa Bear stretched and yawned now early to bed so I can get up with the sun and catch our breakfast. Ribbit, ribbit, ribbit. <laughs> All kinds of noises in the forest. The sun did rise and it was very beautiful, but Papa snored right through it. The frogs, crickets, and owls had made such a racket during the night that he hadn't fallen asleep until just before the rising sun lit up the sky. <laughs> Papa began to get, oh, I think we missed a page. Nope. <laughs> Papa began to get a little discouraged when he went out to catch a breakfast. <laughs> the boat sank as soon as he stepped into it, and all he caught was a 
floppy mudsucker that made snuffling noises and stared. Snuffle, snuffle, glop, said the mudsucker. Click, said the camera. <laughs> it was Papa's turn to snap the pictures when Mama and the cubs tasted the wild berries. The thorns were something fierce and the berries were so sour, even the birds puckered. <laughs> Later, there was a perfectly beautiful sunset, but the bears family didn't get to see much of it. They were too busy swatting the swarms of hungry mountain mosquitoes that swooped in from the lake. Live off the land, you say, shouted Mama, as they ran for the cabin. With all these thorns and mosquitoes, it's more like the land of is living off us. <laughs> It began to rain just as they reached the cabin, but the roof leaked badly, and pretty soon they had more leaks than they had pots and pans. They spent a miserable night. By morning, they were soaked to the fur, and there was a foot of water in the front stairwell. Uh-oh. Don't worry, said Papa, the rain can't last forever and just as soon as I sweep out this water. But instead, Papa sweeping the water, the water swept Papa out, of, out the door, down the muddy slope and into the muddy, muddy lake. When Mama and the cubs were reached him, he looked more like a mud ball than a Papa ball bear. <laughs> Say, he said, Looking at them, I have a, a terrific idea. Let's go home. <laughs> Looks like the camera went click again. So the bear family loaded the trunk, put the car on, the car top on, bundled into the car, <laughs> and bumped and splashed down the mountain in the driving rain. The rain had stopped and the sun had come out by the time they had reached the valley and their tree house had never looked so good to them as it did that day. <laughs> the next day, Mama took the film to the camera store to, to be developed. When the pictures came back a few days later, the Bear family wrote little or titles on them they began to chuckle as they passed the pictures around. The chuckles grew to roaring laughter and soon they were laughing so hard they cried. <laughs> Papa smells the mountain air. We are greeted upon our arrival. <laughs> we taste Papa's wilderness stew. Our first taste of wild mountain berries. <laughs> Papa catches our breakfast. Papa decides it's time to go home. <laughs> it's always good to uh, take pictures on vacation so we can remember what happened, right? And every so often through the years, they take out those pictures and have an absolutely wonderful time enjoying the worst vacation the Bear family ever had. <laughs> Sometimes it's more about the experience than the fun, right? There's always, an, it's always good to go on adventures. So uh, like our uh, videos, subscribe to our channel. Hope you guys uh, are having a great day and make, I hope you have great vacations too. <laughs>